hominids can cool down by sweating. They use their entire body like a, like a dog's tongue. Our hairless bodies allow air to circulate freely on our skin and cool us down as sweat evaporates. This makes us one of the best long distance runners in the animal kingdom. Dan Lieberman believes this gave our ancestors the ability to hunt in a very unusual way. It's called persistence hunting. And he believes the modern ethnographic record can show us how it was done. The Bushmen of the Kalahari offer us an insight into how Homo erectus might have hunted two million years ago. The Bushmen know that at midday, animals rest in the shade, which is why it's the perfect time to be hunting. Once they locate their prey, in this case, a kudu, the marathon begins. Their strategy is simple, run it to exhaustion. Every time the animal tries to rest, the hunters track it down and get it moving again. They never give it a chance to cool down. And the reason they can keep going is that they can sweat. So if the theory is right, the Bushman hunt may help explain how Turkana boy got his meat. Homo erectus had come up with an innovative way of feeding his hungry brain. In this modern hunt, the Bushmen ran in the fierce heat for over four hours. The kudu was finally immobilized by heat stroke. Turkana boy wouldn't have had steel-tipped spears like the Bushmen, but he wouldn't have needed them. Homo erectus probably hunted with close quarters weapons, with spears that were thrown at animals from a short distance, clubs, thrown rocks, weapons like that. They weren't using long distance projectile weapons that we know of. The Homo erectus hunt was simple but effective. It fed not just their larger brains, but the growing complexity of that early human society. There are other social animals, but none quite like us. Society is in every corner of our lives. Our relationships, communication, rules, symbolism, all the things that bind us together. What's behind it? Why do we become so social? Could it have something to do with another innovation, something unprecedented in our evolution, building fires and cooking. Here we've got Erectus, the first species that looks like us. And I think only cooking can explain the magnitude of this change. The earliest evidence that our ancestors deliberately used fire for cooking dates to long after Turkana boy's time. But Richard Wrangham, is sure Homo erectus was building fires much earlier. Now for the first time, we had a species that was committed to living on the ground because they lose their climbing adaptations. Well, how were they sleeping? They had to be able to protect themselves from wild animals. On the African savanna, full of predators who hunt by night, Richard believes Turkana boy and his people couldn't have survived without fire. And he thinks only cooking, which makes food more soft and digestible, can explain why Homo erectus evolved smaller teeth and a much smaller gut. These things are compatible with the reduced cost of digestion produced by cooking food. Nothing else is. As our ancestors reaped the benefits of cooking, something else happened too, at least according to Wrangham we became more social. Humans have this wonderfully calm temperament compared to chimpanzees, say. Where did it come from? 
we were drawn to a common place, the fireplace. Wrangham believes we learn to share and communicate, sitting around fires, waiting for food to cook. It's speculative, but one thing is for sure. In the Homo erectus world, new social relationships had to be evolving. The bonds between mothers and children must have been very different from the apes. For example, a mother orangutan will not allow any other individual to take her infant, will be in constant skin-to-skin -skin contact with that baby for at least the first six months of life, not a moment out of contact. Secure in this unbreakable mother-infant bond, ape babies need less capacity to read the intentions of others than human babies, whose bond with their mothers is surprisingly less secure. The shocking fact is that human mothers abandon their infants much more often than ape mothers. Infanticide by a mother is more common among humans than any other higher ape. Maternal commitment is a lot more contingent in humans than it seems to be in other apes. Unlike most primates, human mothers share parenting with others. A child's survival can depend on making itself appealing to a number of caregivers. Perhaps that's why human infants have evolved a uniquely acute sensitivity. Human infants are born connoisseurs of mothers, reading her facial expression, looking for signs of commitment. We are born hardwired with an awareness of the intentions and emotions of others, which is unique in the animal world. When did humans develop this gift for attributing mental states and feelings to others and for caring about what others thought about them? Could these social instincts have developed with Homo erectus, along with cooperative hunting, bigger brains, longer childhoods, and the use of fire? Perhaps Turkana boy and his people already had social skills that would be familiar to us. Here were intelligent social beings with an increasing capacity for cooperation. It may be this that made possible another great achievement, the exodus from Africa. For millions of years, our earliest ancestors stayed on the African savannas. But at some point, they started to leave. Ancient fossil skulls and tools have been found as far away as China and Indonesia. The question is, when did they leave Africa and why? When Turkana boy was found, scientists thought they had the answer. Here was a strong, large-brained ancestor capable of an arduous migration. He had the look of a world conqueror. In the mid-1980s, we were thinking that a hominid like this one had left Africa, but had done it maybe about a million years ago. For decades, scientists believed big strapping humans like Turkana boy left Africa a million years ago. But new discoveries are showing the mind